Hey guys, it's me. So I haven't made a video in quite some time, but um, I really wanted to get this one out there. And in this video, what I want to talk about is um, PGS testing or genetic testing of embryos before transferring. Um, what's motivating me to do this video is that we are getting ready to do our IVF number two. And in IVF number one, we did do the PGS testing, and it's something that we really regret doing and wish we wouldn't have. So um, that's why I wanted to get this video put together. Um, first off, a little disclaimer, I am in no way, shape, or form any doctor, scientist, biologist, geneticist, anything like that. Um, all I know is what I have researched and from our experience and talking to a couple other doctors. Um, so first off, I want to talk about um, the difference between PGS and PGD. Um, PGD is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, and here they're looking for specific genetic diseases or chromosome disorders. Um, things like cystic fibrosis or sickle cell, uh, balance translocations, things like that. Um, what we did was PGS, and that's pre-implantation genetic screening. And here they're looking for um, aneuploid embryos. So embryos that don't have the correct number of chromosomes. So they may have too many or too, excuse me, they may have too many or too few uh, chromosomes, duplicates, deletions, things like that. So our reasoning for um, regretting doing the PGS testing with IVF1 comes from um, the, our second opinion consultation that we had with our new RE, and I'll get into more details about um, that consultation and what all happened there, but um, this video I just wanted to stick to the PGS testing. So um, what our new RE believes is that the reason we're not pregnant now is because we did do the PGS testing for IVF number one. Um, he was telling us that um, a lot of times the embryos can self-correct themselves and also um, you get a lot of high false positive results for aneuploidy. Um, and he didn't really tell us why. Um, so I started doing a lot of research and reading into this and I found this one study and I'll link the... Um, I'll link that below so that if anybody wants to read up on it, they can. But in this study, what they're talking about is, um, okay, so think of the embryo as um, like a bunch of layers of cells. And the embryo itself is just one line of cells that is in there, um, like a core. And so what happens as the embryo is growing is it starts segregating out the abnormal cells. And so these cells are pushed to the outside. Um, and it keeps the normal cells to the inside on for, you know, the core and what is actually going to become the baby. Um, and this outside that it pushes these abnormal cells to is called the trophectoderm. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not sure. But um, the trophectoderm is what becomes the placenta. So if abnormal cells are in the placenta, it doesn't, it, it's, it really doesn't matter because that's not the actual makeup of the baby, what's going to become the baby. It's just the placenta. So, um when uh, the most common biopsy that they're doing when they're doing these genetic tests is um, a trophectoderm biopsy and that's they're taking cells from the outermost part of the embryo and they're doing this I mean what they say is you know because it reduces risk of damaging the actual embryo because you're not taking cells from the embryo itself it's it's that outer layer um, and so that's where the problem lies, I think, in all of these, well, and in that study, what I was reading, that's where the problem is, is because the embryo has, and that's, I think that's what our doctor was talking about, about the self-correcting, is when it segregates, segregates out those abnormal cells, um, when they do the biopsy, they're taking it from the outermost layer, and that is where a large portion of abnormal cells are. So you might get, you know, these results that are saying that the embryo is aneuploid when in fact the actual baby on the inside is perfectly normal and so all of these are being discarded. Um, so that's what's reducing, you know, the amount of embryos that you have to work with. So I do think, with that said, I do think that there are cases when genetic testing is appropriate. Um, PGD, for example, when, you know, the parents are at risk of having a biological child that 
you know, can get inherited diseases because what they're looking for here is something specific, not just the number of chromosomes being off a little or something like that. They're looking for something specific. So if that specific problem is found, then I think that the chance of having a false positive is going to be a lot less in cases like that. And with the PGS testing, um, I think that it would be appropriate for cases where um, you have recurrent pregnancy loss. Um, so while you might discard some number of normal embryos, um, I think it's more like a better safe than sorry kind of scenario. And so while you, you know, you might reduce the, the amount of embryos that you have to work with, those normal or euploid embryos that you do get are probably more than likely, you know, euploid and normal and would help, you know, result in, in a, in a healthy pregnancy and baby. Um, but for situations like us, I don't think it was appropriate. Um, we're not predisposed to any gen genetic diseases. Um, we have been thoroughly checked and we aren't at any more of a risk of passing down any kind of genetic diseases or disorders to our children. So really all it was doing for us is eliminating or reducing the number of embryos that we have to work with and therefore reducing our chances of actually getting pregnant. And again, this is mostly my interpretation of what I have read. Um, again, the, I'm, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from doing PGS testing because, or PGD testing. I know that people swear by it and there are, you know, a lot of success cases. I do think that the idea of it is really, really amazing. And I mean, it just sounds perfect. You know, you, you, they tell you, you have a perfect embryo to transfer and you expect that to play out. And I mean, that's what happened in our case. You know, they told us that the embryo that we transferred was euploid and we had the genetic, genetic testing and I still miscarried. So the technology is not perfect. I mean, by any means, and it's so new that I feel like it's really, really hard to trust in that. Um, so yeah, there's my wrap up of it. That's what I think, that's what I feel. Um, I know this video might make some people mad because a lot of people do swear by it, but um, again, it's just my opinion. So I guess that's all I have to say and we will see you guys in my next video. Bye.